Howdy do folks. It's Friday morning when I'm filming this. We gotta drop off this load I have on my trailer. Have I showed it to you yet? I haven't showed you my load yet. I didn't even do that yesterday. So you may have seen this clip at the end of yesterday's vlog because I'll have wanted to show you yesterday this. Let's go show you this load. I have a load of shingles. I have to deliver it into Hamilton, Ontario as soon as I can. And then I have to go over to St. Catharines, Ontario and pick up some steel. It's gonna be 10 foot wide. I'm gonna get to use my fancy look at me beacons because I'm gonna have a wide load. I'm gonna have it flagged, gonna have the signs on. It's gonna be a fun trip through Northern Ontario all the way to Alberta with that. But first we have to deliver these shingles. Come with me. Look, this guy's got horns on the side of his truck, on the side of his hood there. That's awesome. See that? All right, this is what we're dealing with here. 14 pallets. I don't need the triaxle for this load, but I will need it for my next load that I'm picking up. That one's gonna be 65,000 pounds. You know, I should just deliver these shingles right to my house. I could use them. Literally, I could. With my roof leaking the way it is. Except we want steel roof. Steel roofing this time. If you steel roofing, you completely erase all the possibilities of ice damming in the future. We had our insurance guy come to our place yesterday. I think I talked about it yesterday a little bit. We had the insurance, not adjuster, but the insurance claim guy come and take a look at all the damage and he's gonna go to our insurance company and fight for us on our behalf with them so that they help us out with a new roof because there's nothing we can really do and we have to replace the whole thing. If you're new to the channel, our home, you can go back and watch past vlogs or you can watch my wife's vlogs. She talks about it too. Her link to her channel is down below in the description of this video. We have ice damming on our roof and what happens is the, uh, the ice melts, turns to water underneath the snow, goes to the edge of the roof, then it goes down to minus 30 again and it freezes there. The next time it melts a little bit from the top, it runs down to that ice dam and then it goes down to minus 30 again and it freezes and it expands and pushes up underneath the shingles. And once it's pushed up under there far enough, on a really warm day when that melts, it goes right down through the nail holes into the attic, through the attic, down to the poly, and then it searches for a hole to get down into the house through a light socket or a heating vent or any hole it can find in the ceiling, and then it pours down into the house. So we've had water raining down into our house. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit pricey to fix, but we're gonna get it done and hopefully insurance can help us. We have to wait and see. Other than that, though, we are ready to rock and roll. How do I get out of here now? I think I gotta go right. We're at the Pilot Flying J in Wyoming, Ontario, just inside the Canadian border from the US. We crossed from Port Huron, Michigan into Sarnia, Ontario. And about 10 minutes into Canada, there's this truck stop here. Be careful though for the potholes, you might lose a tire. Wouldn't want that to happen. Go through here and we'll get back on the road and uh, it's about two hours to Hamilton from here. And hopefully they can unload me quickly.
way towards Hamilton here right now. We're about a half hour away. I'm really hoping they can unload me quickly because my reload shipper is anxiously waiting my arrival so he can load me up with that steel. And then I still have to tie it down, strap it, flag it before I can leave there. And uh, I've got to do all that before they can leave there. And it's Friday. So I'm guessing, well, last week they said the same thing to me. They wanted me to rush to get there, but then there was two other trucks that arrived after me yet. So I'm kind of getting the idea that it's just, in general, they want us to rush every week. I'm not sure. But I do know that they can't go home until I'm done, and I totally understand that. I like to go home as early as possible on a Friday as well. I mean, I don't remember what that's like. I mean, I've, I don't get to go home early on the weekends. I still gotta work through the weekend, but I understand. So I'm doing the best I can to get there as early as I can. Like I said last night already, I already crossed into Canada so that I only have to stop for my eight hours instead of my 10 hours. So if I would have stopped in Michigan instead of pushing to get across the border, remember I just barely made it across again on my hours? I would have had to stop for 10 and I would have been two hours later than I am right now. So, I mean, my conscience is clear. I've done everything I can to get there as quickly as I can. It's just trucking, right? Everything's a rush. Everybody wants you there yesterday, whether you're picking up or delivering. And I don't blame anyone for that. Part of the job. I kind of like it when it's a little more relaxed, but this next load is gonna be more relaxed for me like that because I can't pull it at night, right? So I can only drive until the half hour after the sun sets. Then I have to park it. And I can't start driving again until a half hour before the sun pops above the horizon. And if you wanna know when the sun sets, all you gotta do is ask Google. Google's got all the answers. They don't always have all the right answers, but in this case, they have the answer. All you gotta do is uh, say, when is the sun setting where I am? And if you're on your mobile device with your location services on, then it knows where you are. So, what I'll do later, once I'm stopped, is I'm hoping to get to North Bay still. So I'll go onto Google and say, Google, when is the sun setting in North Bay, Ontario? It'll probably say around six o'clock, so that means I'd have to stop by 6.30. And if I get caught driving after that, I don't really know what would happen because it's never happened to me, but I'm guessing the Ontario Ministry of Transportation would not be very pleased with me. They would probably, uh, I, I believe they would take away my permits so that I can't haul over dimension anymore in Ontario, at least for a while. They would find me a lot of money and I'd have to shut down wherever I am. Maybe there's more consequences. I don't know. I'm not going to find out. You can read on the permits what all the consequences are if you're interested. I did read through it. Through it. Like, don't get me wrong. I just... I don't know what the fines would be. It doesn't say what the fines would be in the document. All I know is that we're in Ontario, so the fines would be astronomical. That I can guarantee. This is Ontario. Well, there it is. Some over here, the rest over there, and nothing on here. The trailer is empty and good to go. Now, to pick up the load that we've been working towards this whole time that lumber load down to Illinois, and this load to here was only to get me here for the load I'm about to pick up. The load with the nice numbers. The wide load that's taking me to Alberta. Let's go get it. So all of this fuss, running around delivering these loads, the only reason we did that was to get to Ontario. 
it's better to come here with something on the trailer than to come here empty. All right, we got 53 kilometers, about 30 miles. Oh, I guess I should uh, close my cubby door. Jeez, what's wrong with me? Can't drive down the road with that open. What am I, a rookie? All right, let's get out of here. It's kind of a tight yard. We only unload one truck at a time. And there's another truck pulling in behind me right now. said no trucks at first. It says avoid engine brake. Okay. So I want to turn right. Okay. So I want to be in the right lane. Turning right always works better when you're already in the right lane. Some people don't know this. Good thing I paid attention in driver school. Oh here, there's the highway. Turn right onto Redfield Valley Parkway North. Thanks. All right, so St. Catharines, like I said, about a half hour away. Turn, turn right onto Redfield Valley Parkway North. Right here. Turn right from the right lane, not the left lane. They need to be more clear about that in some driving schools. Use the right lane to turn right. Unless if you have a long trailer and you gotta button hook it, obviously. But I'm mostly talking to the cars who like the lane dive. Oh, that's my exit! I don't care that I'm in the left lane, I'm diving across all lanes of traffic. Wouldn't want to miss my exit and have to do a U-turn. Oh, the geese are back. Hey, look at that. This whole pond off to our right here is filled with Canadian geese standing on the ice. You're a bit early, bud. Guess they got tired of Mexico. I'm gonna have to buy new wipers on the way home, I think. This wiper is falling apart at the tip there. The rubber's coming off of it. Diesel, what are you doing over there? What are you doing to your frog, man? What did he do to you? Really narrow roads. Oh, merge left. They want me to merge left, okay. I scared that van. Uh, I'm not gonna hit you, buddy. Don't worry. Just stay in your lane and you don't have to worry about me. This is St. Catharines, Ontario. Beautiful little city. I have family who lives here, actually. My dad's brother. My aunt and uncle are from here somewhere. I have no idea what part of St. Catharines they live in, but... They are my eastern cousins. My eastern aunt and uncle. They've lived out here for as long as I can remember. And they like it. I mean, it's a beautiful city. I mean, I'd love living here too. A lot of history here. He does amazing artwork. That's uh, my uncle who uh, did that carving of our last name above our sink at home. He does beautiful wood carvings. Same as Uncle Danny. Uncle Danny and Aunt Lily. I still say Tonta, Tonta Lily, because of uh, my German Mennonite heritage. We don't call our aunts aunts. We call them Tonta, which is the same thing as aunt, and it's just in German. Plotdeutsch, Low German. Wouldn't that be cool if we ran into them? Not literally, I don't want to hit them. But I mean, if we saw them here? I'll have to ask them next time I talk to them. I don't talk to them that often because they, they live so far away, right? 
but they were nice enough to come all the way out for our wedding. That's a two, two and a half day drive. Or a pretty pricey flight. So it's really nice to see them there then. That was the last time I saw them though. 350 meters, turn left on Petrie Street. All right, so I had to switch trailers. This is a, a rental trailer, apparently. Has a funny little thing at the front here. At least I can be extra sure nothing's gonna hit my hit my cab. And then we got this. Apparently I parked very crooked. I'm kind of ashamed of myself. I'm gonna have to fix this right away, but I wanted to quickly show you what we're working with here. Pretty much the same load as last time except this time it's on a flatbed and this flatbed it's like shoulder height it's a really high flatbed or maybe they're all like that and I'm just making a big deal out of nothing but there we go That's the day everybody. Thanks for watching. It was a busy day for me, really busy. Uh, I had to unload those shingles in Hamilton, Ontario. The delivery went pretty smooth, but I had to wait for two trucks that got there before me. Other than waiting a little bit, it wasn't too bad. Once I was unloaded there, I rushed over to St. Catharines uh, to switch trailers. I thought I was getting live loaded, which means I thought they were gonna load the trailer I had behind me already. But it turns out I just had to drop that trailer and pick up an already loaded trailer, a preloaded trailer. And it was a rental, you saw it there. It's that tri-axle flatbed. It's a hardcore trailer, I have it behind me right now. And I'm filming this a little in the future, but I have it behind me right now. It is a massive anchor of a trailer. It is huge, it is heavy. It makes me guzzle the fuel. <laughs> Did you see that thing? Like I know I only showed it for like two seconds when I was standing beside it. Maybe I'll show it again in the next couple of days, but that thing is like at my chin. That's how high the the deck is or the bed of the trailer is. Most flat beds are about what, five feet high? This one is probably close to six feet high. It is hardcore, it's, it's huge, it's high. <laughs> but uh, I tarped the load, I flagged it, and uh, we made it all the way up to uh, just north of Toronto at the Kings On Road. It's a rest area just north of Toronto when you're going up towards Barrie, and that's where we spent the night. So uh, I will talk to you again tomorrow. I can only drive during daylight hours, so we're getting up early in the morning and driving till the sun goes down. I can't drive my full my full day or my full logbook day uh, because with the load this wide on the two-lane highways up north in Northern Ontario, they don't want me uh, putting other people in danger, I guess, hauling wide loads at night. Anyways, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. Take care, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell beside the subscribe button and join our crew here. We're trying to get our channel up to 100,000 subscribers. We've been experiencing higher than usual growth recently. Thanks guys, I really do appreciate you sharing all my videos because if you appreciate my videos and if you like my videos, chances are your friends and family might as well. So we're trying to get our channel up to 100,000 subscribers. The reason is, full disclosure, when I hit 100,000, YouTube sends me a silver play button in a little glass plaque. And I've been working towards that since I started making videos in 2011. So it's been eight years I've been making videos and about seven years that I've been doing it every single day, almost. I'm not as dedicated as my buddy Troy, 
Now, his link is down below in the description of my videos as well. He's been making videos for every for over 3,000 days straight. I miss a day here and there, but for the most part, I've been doing it almost every day for eight years. So if you want to see what I was like eight years ago and what I've been doing every day of my life since then, go to my channel, go to my past videos, and that's why we have them all numbered. You can go down there and check it out. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you. Take care.